podcast. My name is Jacob Cooker, but my friends call me Cub, and you should too. Every day on the Cub Cooker Supernatural podcast, I explore faith, spirituality, and the realms of paranormal. Today, I have a fantastic episode for you. A little bonus episode here on a Sunday afternoon. Today, we're going to discuss the philosophy of time travel by Roberta Sparrow. This is a fictional rabbit hole that we are about to go down. And I think that there's definitely some fruit here. Definitely going to find uh, some really interesting things. I already have just reading through this fictional work. Uh, this is actually from the fictional book in the fictional movie, Donnie Darko. If you've never seen Donnie Darko, there might be uh, some actual uh, spoilers in this. So I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. Uh, just be warned going into this. Um, I'm probably going to reveal a lot about the plot of the movie as we do this series. Also doing a short series on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of the things. Uh, threads now, too. I'm over on Threads. So lots and lots of new content coming out around this. And really what this is, is within the movie Donnie Darko, um, there is a woman in the movie. And you, at the beginning, you believe she's just kind of a crazy old woman that lives in an old house at the end of the road, checks her mailbox every day because she's lost her mind. And then you find out that she used to be a nun. And uh, because she was a nun, she kind of like had this moment of discovery, discovering God or herself or whatever you want to call it, uh, and ended up leaving the nunnery, uh, becoming a teacher at the local school, teaching science and writing a science fiction book. Uh, and in the very beginning of the book, which we're actually going to read from today, yes, there is enough of the book in the movie script driving the movie forward that we can actually dig into it and find some data, find some of the philosophy behind the movie Donnie Darko and this fictional work by Roberta Sparrow that's combining God and science and timelines, good and evil, and all of these different things into one philosophy. It's fantastic. What's up, Missy? How are you doing? Annie, how are you doing? Rebecca Lynn, thank you for being here. Katie, thanks for being here. Gary, I hope you're having a beautiful day. Esonen, how are you? Javi, how are you doing? I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Uh, like I said, no better day to discuss this science fiction stuff than a Sunday afternoon, right? You can watch a movie or you can tune in with your boy Cub here on the Cub Cougar Supernatural podcast. What's up, D-Block? Italia, how are you doing? I hope you're having a great day. Deldic, how are you? Tony, thanks for joining. Petro, thanks for being here. Uh, Ted Bradford, Dan Din, how are you? Um, yeah, good Good to have everybody today. So uh, what's up, Chrissy? How are you doing? Chrissy says, so, sup, homie? How are you? Uh, Chrissy, I hope you're having a beautiful day. Um, so I'm going to actually read from this today. I don't know where it's going to take us, but I know it's going to take us somewhere super interesting, probably pretty beautiful. Um, in fact, I've gotten through chapter one on my video series already, which you can find coming out over the next 24 or 48 hours um, on all of the channels. So um, this book by Roberto Sparrow, I've included some info on it uh, just in the description. The philosophy of time travel in the movie Donnie Darko is a fictional book written by the character Roberto Sparrow. This book plays a central role in the film's intricate narrative outlining concepts related to time travel and destiny. The book introduces the idea of a tangent universe, a parallel reality coexisting within the primary universe. In the tangent universe, an event called a tangent event occurs. Now, this is also called a nexus event in Marvel lore, okay? A nexus event if you watch Marvel movies or read Marvel comics or you just know Marvel lore um, and, and you're a nerd like I am. So uh, so that would be a nexus event in that, that universe. Resulting in the creation of an artifact, an object that doesn't belong, a living receiver chosen by fate is tasked with correcting the anomaly and returning the artifact to the primary universe. So this is where it gets, this is rabbit hole... Like, put on your, your woo-woo caps, because here we go. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is the more I read within science fiction and, and different novels and stuff, the more I find that it really does cross and blur the lines between fiction and science, philosophy, religion, faith, spirituality, all of those things. And it made me wonder, in fact, I had this deep thought a while back, is like, 
what if like all of these things, even when they're labeled fiction and the author believes it's fiction, what if everything's pulling from these Akashic records that we hear about all the time that are pulling from the psychic realms and other entities, and there's no new idea under the sun, everything is recycled information and energy, and really everything we have is all telling the same story. And the more you like actually meditate on that idea, the more you watch, like you'll watch Star Trek and you watch like uh, you know, a regular drama on TV and you watch and you just see like all of these connections and like the weirdest thing is like you're watching some sci-fi show then you're watching just some drama and they're talking about the same concept and you're like, how is that even possible? How am I like surfing this wave of reality where I'm like, I'm streaming these shows. It's not like they're talking about them in the same time because they're both new episodes. It's just these weird serendipities where they're both talking about string theory randomly. Uh, or they're both talking about the God particle or finding God or something weird. Like, and you're like, how does that even work? How do, how can I even surf reality in this manner? And so, uh, that's kind of where I came up with this idea is like, what if fictional works are actually canonical to our reality and our experience of reality? What's up, Frank? How are you doing, brother? All things, Lisa, how are you? Thanks for being here. Shabish, thanks for joining. Harold, thanks for being here. Marty, thanks for joining. Design Gold R. Ree McAllister, Jason Bass, Ben, uh, Nerd, Alex, Lizzie, Tony, Petro. Thank you guys for joining. I appreciate you guys taking time on a Sunday afternoon to get a little woo-woo with me. Think about some higher level concepts, just some higher minded stuff, some transcendental type things here. Um, I just thought I'd give it a try on a Sunday. I've got a busy week. And so I wanted to get one extra live stream in to really kick this kind of theory of mine off here. So... Um, so I'm going to read directly from the philosophy here. So, uh, the book starts out, it says, these are the pages from the fictional book, the philosophy of time travel by Roberto Sparrow. This text in these pages are crucial to understanding the movie and rules within the tangent universe. And you can find all of this over on DonnieDarko.org, by the way, it's like a whole .org website dedicated to Donnie Darko lore and legends. So, Go support them. This is not my work. I'm merely giving commentary on a fictional work. And uh, like I said, I don't ever read anything in its entirety. I'm not going to go through the whole book today. We're going to go through the whole book eventually, but it's going to be spread out a bunch, a bunch of different episodes for commentary reasons. So go support what they're doing over there if you like this. And you like having access to this information. They actually have screen grabs and show a lot of the stuff from the movie. Uh, the metaphysical breakdowns of where these these uh, energies from the timeline lead the body. Um, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about with the whole coming out of the chest and everything. So, uh, Fields HN says, uh, I've been going insane on this movie since it came out. Good for you, my friend. Uh, I've been praying for someone to go over this. OMG, it's the universe. Uh, heck yeah, I'm stoked. Hey, that's crazy. That is crazy. Good for you. I mean, like, what a serendipity today. I felt super, super led to do this. Um, normally, I do a lot of, like, biblical stuff and, like, Gnostic scripture. And then, like, we've done a bunch of Hindu, Vedic text. Um, but I thought it was time to just get into some of these more fictional things that I can spin on. Because it's less, it's, you know, people can't argue about it as much. You know, you, you do one Bible video and everybody argues with you. This is like, it's up to anybody's interpretation. And what I want to do with this series, here's what the, the real point of this series is about. What's up, Angel Appleseed? Is I want to share with you what I've been doing to manifest that's been working. Like literally working. Um, like literally changed the whole timeline of my life in the last, you know, several weeks. Um, and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you. I've been working on a framework so I can teach it back to our community. Um, it's not stuff. I don't really like go teach online so much. You know, um, we had a great call on Saturday and I get to teach a lot more and talk with people uh, and really be more of a co-mentor in our community. And I don't really do that publicly because it can kind of get like boring unless you really want that. That's why I have the private community. I'll share more about that later. Uh, but for today, you know, I like to be entertaining, but also thought provoking. And I do want to share some of the things I've actually been practicing that oddly tie into what we're talking about within this, this, bleh, this book, this work. So, uh, so the book actually starts out 
the forward of the book, what I just read is actually from the website. The forward of the book within the movie says, I would like to thank the sisters of St. John Chapel in Alexandria, Virginia, for their support in my decision. By the grace of God, they are. And I think there's deep meaning here. I think there's very, very deep meaning. Uh, I am also looking for more information on the author of this, the screenwriters, everything that you know went into this. What was the point of this? What's all the symbolism hidden? Because I don't know, but but right away I look at this list: Sister Eleanor Lewis, Sister Francesca Gaudani, Sister Helena Davis, Sister Catherine Arnold, Sister Mary Lee Pond, Sister Virginia Wessex. Now, right away, I see some divine things in these. Obviously, these names are coming from uh, you know a Catholic community, probably very Germanic Catholic community. So you've got some names that are, you know, very common to that type of culture. I know that because a lot of my family, the Cooker family, comes from that culture. So uh, Sister Eleanor Lewis, right away I see E-L, Eleanor, L as in Elohim, Elohim, as we've talked about from uh, the, the Torah, the ancient scriptures. Sister Francesca, now Francis, uh, you know, you can go look at that. Uh, but I like this, G-O-D-I-N-A-I, uh, Gadani. And I thought that was interesting. It has God right in there um, and Anai in there, which is also a uh, denotation of divinity. So very interesting here. Helena uh, or Helen comes from Hel, H-E-L, not H-E double toothpick, the burning pit place, but H-E-L, the underworld. In mythology, these are just things that I saw. Um, then you have Sister Catherine Arnold. I'm sure Catherine has some meaning. I have not figured that out yet. Mary, obviously the Virgin Mary, and then literally we have Sister Virginia, which is virgin, right? Like so. I mean, to me, this is almost like telling like a biblical story within that, as she's thanking these sisters for helping her with this. And I've noted that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, with Roberta Sparrow being the seventh, seven being a divine number. I don't know. These are just things that I like noticed, right? The, my weird mind works this way. Fields says, yes. Mystical Priestess says, thanks. Uh, Fields says, right. DJ, what's up? How are you? Uh, Tina, thanks for being here. Uh, Mystical Priestess says, sadly, never seen the movie, but I'm definitely going to watch it now. Donnie Darko, right? Yes, Donnie Darko. I watched it on, I think it's on Amazon Prime right now. I'm not positive, but I don't know. I've got all the networks, so. But it was free with my membership, whatever, wherever I watched it, so. Um, and then we get into chapter one here. So I'm going to check. Let's see. Uh, okay, good. We got some comments on Facebook here. It took Facebook a minute to, like, get going here. So welcome, everybody. Merle, what's up, brother? How are you doing? Merle says, hey, Cub, I hope you're having a beautiful day, brother. Just got here. What movie, please? Julia says we're talking about Donnie Darko today, actually. Jason says Donnie Darko. Yep, you're right. Uh, Julie says, oh, thank you. Um, and then Richard says, eeks, let's seek. Yeah, absolutely. The rabbit hole, brother. The rabbit hole. So Riley says, hey, Cub, what's up, brother? How are you doing? Wayne, thanks for being here. Um, and then Chrissy says, well, I'll be checking that out. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely check out the movie. If you haven't watched it, it's a trip. Um, I definitely consider this more of an adult movie because there's some very strong language in it. I try to be super family friendly. It may not offend anybody, but just kind of a warning. Uh, it's definitely, I think it's rated R, I believe, for the language. I'm not sure, but um, not my podcast. Again, I try to be family friendly, but the movie is, is it's a heavier subject matter. There's a lot of adult themes in it. So I wouldn't suggest watching it with your kids. It's pretty dark but also very fanciful. Um, it kind of reminds me of like things like the labyrinth and stuff kind of coming out more around like the eighties and nineties that had more of that darker esoteric tone while they're trying to explore like higher level concepts. So, uh, Grace, thanks for being here. How are you doing? My friend Dakota, what's up, my friend, how are you Clinton? Thanks for joining Nikki. Thank you for being here. Uh, I love you all, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thanks for being here. Thanks for the likes today. Thank you guys for the roses. We've got our goal of roses over here on TikTok, 10,000 roses today. That should be easy to hit 10,000 stars on Facebook. Uh, really, really appreciate you guys. That just directly supports me so that every time I go live, I actually make a little bit of money and I don't just 
you know, run my mouth up here, um, you know, for fun, um, which I enjoy doing, but it really helps to pay the internet bill by getting tips. So thank you guys. Appreciate that. Um, Richard says offensive. No doom and gloom. Yes. For children under 15. No. Yeah, de definitely. There you go. There you go, Richard. That's totally good. Um, and again, it's up to you guys who have kids, you know, if you want to watch it with them or not. So thanks for the warning. Uh, but to be honest, my kids have probably heard it all from their father. Sad, but true. Well, you know, absolutely. I just kind of have to throw that out there. Martin, brother, thank you so much for the hundred roses. Really appreciate that, my friend. You rock. You guys are fantastic. Lance, thanks for being here. So I'm going to read chapter one now, and then let's talk about it. I want to hear what you guys think about it. Like, what are your ideas on it? Um, what can we do to try to make some sense of this? Now, this is a fictional movie and book, right? 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 Uh, chapter one, the tangent universe. Okay, so right away, tangent to me, you know, we all know a friend, and we've all been there ourselves. We go off on a tangent, right? I go off on a tangent every time I podcast, but... Um, so tangent universe is something that's like, it's not in flow with the main timeline. It's kind of doing its own thing, right? Again, in Marvel, it's a Nexus event. If you're watching the show Loki, you have these Nexus events that are happening that are branching these timelines. Um, and they're trying to keep the sacred timeline or the main timeline, uh, kind of under control. Right. Um, and this is dealt with in so many different things. Time travel is one of the most philosophically interesting ideas. And you get then you get, you know, here we are in 2023 and starting in 2020, all these people are waking up. You got all these TikTokers coming out, and now they're everywhere on all social media, uh, including myself, talking about timeline shifting, but nobody has any regard as to how that might affect any sort of sacred timeline, any sort of main timeline. Also, we don't think about how all the evil done in the world might affect some sacred timeline as well. And what do we do to prune timelines? We create, a.k.a. the kingdom of God on earth, right? And that doesn't mean that you're religious. That means you're spiritual. That means you understand that you're planting seeds of good. That means that you're changing the timeline for people, creating better opportunities, not only for survival, but for evolution as well as ascension within humanity um, and all of that i believe adds to the sacred timeline now i can't decide what event here or there is a sacred timeline but i can look back through history and go there are some things where the timeline has tried to collapse itself over and over and over right i mean you can just go read a history book and go dang people are evil uh this is insane why would people treat other people this way what what could have unfolded if we hadn't wiped out this civilization or this group of people or whatever like um and so to me none of that's part of the sacred timeline what is the sacred timeline it's where all the flowers grow together in the garden and ultimately like what loki the show asks and i think what donnie darko is asking too um and i can't speak for the writers but my interpretation of it is is the sacred timeline not the one with the most branches where there's the most life there's the most experiences of life that's just my idea so um uh, calm c says just joined in what book is the timeline so what we're talking about is the book called the philosophy of time travel by roberta sparrow this is a fictional rabbit hole we're going down today because the book's actually fictional in fact, the book doesn't even exist in our universe. It exists within the movie Donnie Darko's universe as um, as a work of fiction in that in that work of fiction. So we're like we're several layers deep in the work of fiction here. And why am I talking about that as a spiritual channel? Because, again, I think all things are canon. I don't think anything is not canon. In fact, I think movies, television, um lore, legend, mythology, scripture, all of that is canonical to the human experience, meaning it's all suitable for learning and gaining understanding to those with eyes to see and ears to hear, because there's no new thing under the sun. Uh, a Marvel movie to me has just as much beautiful scripture in it as uh, a passage out of the Bible. And that, that's not to be blasphemous or anything. It's just, I think that everything is channeling from a higher consciousness. I think we are all God experiencing things uh, through our individual eyes, through our individual lower vibrational reality, um, we are all God 
God is playing the game, right, as us, the greatest 3D game ever created. And so that's that's really kind of how I jump off the ledge with this philosophy. So can we jump timelines? That's exactly what I'm talking about with this theory and this series. And I'm going to share how I've been jumping timelines personally, but also some really weird things that I've noticed have happened as I try to do that. Some pushback I feel like I've gotten, some rifts in time I feel like I've gotten, some weird serendipities uh, some loss of energy myself, uh, waking up and, you know, knowing that, um, not in the highest timeline where I'm receiving energy, but I've exhausted my energy because maybe I was forcing something that I shouldn't be forcing and I should have just flown into it, flowed into it. Um, I don't know that again, that's just my experience. So I'm going to be sharing why, again, I think Donnie Darko has some secrets for us who are in the manifesting community, in the timeline shifting community, uh, in the woo-woo land, right? Uh, proudly in the woo-woo land. So, um, awesome. I will check that out, uh, Richard. I have not checked that out, but thank you for sharing. I uh, love watching some, some esoteric meaning uh, music videos. Thank you. So chapter one, the tangent universe. The primary universe is fraught with great peril. W-A-R, because I can't say that online right now because of everything going on. W-A-R, plague, famine, and natural disaster are common. Unalivement comes to us all. Can't say that either. The fourth dimension of time is stable, is a stable construct, though it is not impenetrable. Incidents, when the fabric of the fourth dimension becomes corrupted, are incredibly rare. If the tangent universe occurs, it will be highly unstable, sustaining itself for no longer than several weeks. Eventually, it will collapse upon itself, forming a black hole within the primary universe capable of destroying all existence. So, wow, that's pretty ominous, right? Pretty ominous. Yeah, the canon of humanity. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. What's up, honeybee? How are you doing, Melissa? I hope you're having a beautiful day. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining Love you, my friend. Hope you're doing well. Thought I'd jump on on a Sunday. Kind of a bonus podcast for everybody. Why not, right? Uh, what else? I could have mowed today, but I was like, I don't want to mow. I'd rather talk to my friends. So uh, so here we are. What's up, friends? Um, so here, here's where this gets super interesting here. And you can go back and read this. Like I said, DonnieDarko.org has this document on there, which is, and, and you can watch the movie and like freeze frame and see all of these, you know, basically each chapter of the movie is each chapter of the book, right? Of this fictional book by this fictional character in the movie. Um, but the tangent universe to me, have you ever been manifesting something? What's up, Shelly? How are you doing? Shelly says, glad you're on today. Thank you, my friend. Honeybee says, I am. Thank you. Glad to see you. Awesome. Um, yeah, awesome. Good. Lancelot says, I've read through the pictures of it on the internet. Yes. And like I said, they do have like the actual, you know, PDF over on uh, on the .org. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, you don't have to just go look at like the slides and all the different pictures overlaid on them. So this is where it gets weird. Have you ever been manifesting something and, and it starts to come through and then it collapses? Say I, I, right? Uh, you're like, I'm going to manifest this thing and you almost get the job or you almost get the new friend or boyfriend or girlfriend or you almost get the new opportunity or you almost get the money or you almost like whatever it is, right? And you're trying to manifest. And I really want to talk about manifesting actual timelines. We had a great discussion in our private community on Saturday. But when I asked what you're trying to manifest, a lot of people were kind of going to the place of like, I'm trying to manifest better spiritual understanding. Great. You should be anyway, period. Like if you're even thinking about manifesting, you're probably thinking about spirituality. So when I talk about manifesting, I'm talking about changing my life, changing my timeline. I want something different. I'm tired of the view out the window. I'm tired of the people in my life. I'm tired of my BS. I want a new reality. And I'm going to like literally go in and rewrite the source code for my life. And you go and you do that and you're like, it's working, it's working. And then it like all crumbles back down, right? Like who's done that? I've been there too. With that said, why is that? It's because we have not, we, we've only rewritten the scene. 
we didn't rewrite the universe. And we actually have to go and rewrite the universe. And this is much more difficult. This is much higher level. This is much more annoying. Uh, this is much, this is where the real magic comes in, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. Baby Ruth says totally has happened and mid manifest it spirals. Exactly. Why is this? Okay. Part of the reason this is, and I shared with my community on Saturday, and I'm actually going to share with you guys today three statements that I've been repeating over and over and why, why these three statements rewrite your universe. Okay. They don't just rewrite the scene and then it crumbles or maybe you do get the manifestation and then you lose it. I've manifest a house before and then lost it several years later. I've manifest a car before and lost it several years later. I manifest a boat and had to sell it. I manifest a camper and it was a piece of junk. Like lot, like lots of manifestations that did not end up being in the highest good, like and in more of a permanent, like new reality experience where I could rest in that new reality and know that it was solidified until I changed it again. That's what I want to talk about. That's what I want to teach. That's what I'm trying to teach our community right now in our private community. That's what I'm working on writing my new thesis, if you will, going into 2024 because we need it right now in the spiritual community. People are being taught to manifest and it's for a timeline, which is becoming a branch rather than grafting it to your sacred timeline. And I really want to teach how to do that. And I want to explore how to do that. And I want to master how to do that in my life. I'm not saying I've mastered it yet, but I've, no I've noticed enough things, enough synchronicities, enough issues with the way manifesting is being taught that it is not becoming a part of your core timeline. It is literally a branch that you go explore and then you come back to your resting state. You come back to your I am, right? Which is not a bad thing, but you got to rewrite your I am from, from the ground up before you even attempt some of this other stuff. That's what I've had to go back and redo in my life. That's one of the biggest things I learned from Donnie Darko is don't, op don't open a wormhole because it might unalive you, right? It might, it might end your story, okay? You know, how many of you guys want like that fancy sports car? You want the little, you know, the little convertible, you want the new whatever, like, you know, um, and, and you know, the the Tesla, whatever, all the whatever's cool now. I don't know. I drive a pickup, so for me that's cool. But you want the the thing, right? And and you get it and you go and you press the gas too hard and you end up in a horrible accident. And you messed up your timeline because you have the authority to do that because you weren't sensitive to the sacred timeline of your life. The fact that you have a purpose, a mission, a credo and an existence and I am to actually share with the world. Can you do that from the accident? Yeah. But you got a lot of healing time. You got a lot of, you lost a lot of time. Worst case scenario, right? You got to actually reincarnate and start over and you got, you left a lot of people grieving behind, right? So that's what I'm talking about. Let's prune that back. Let's not create a branch timeline. Let's graft into the sacred timeline of our life, our highest good, our fate, and let's graft our destiny onto that so that it threads all the way around it. Absolutely, Martin. Martin says, sounds like lessons in detachment. Absolutely. Truth trained for confirmation here. We often fail manifesting because we seek these things from outside of ourselves absolutely brother absolutely and that's exactly what i'm getting into with this when we create a nexus event in our life it is because we are taking something from outside of ourselves when we create a tangent universe it's because we're taking something from outside of ourselves that we feel like we need to be complete rather than completing ourselves within and then taking anything that we want from that i am within and making that so in our reality because when you do that a really weird thing happens. You end up with the same red sports car with the 8,000 horsepower engine or whatever it is that you wanted, right? And you treat it completely different. You honor it and respect it and you use it in a different way. In the tangent universe or the nexus event or the branched timeline or the one that is outside of the I am, you've created a timeline and manifest something that you're doing out of ego. And that ego is doing that to feed something within you that you didn't need to feed. You needed to heal it. Okay. This is where this gets deep. 
and I've, I've done this before in my life because I had the house in the country and I was like, yeah, look at this house. This is nice. Like, oh yeah. And I mean, it wasn't a mansion, but I acted like it was a mansion because it was trying to plug in. It, it was literally a nexus event. It was literally a tangent universe. It was literally a branch timeline from my sacred timeline because I treated it like a thing to come from the outside and do something to me on the inside. And it didn't, all it did was create dissonance. And I always, I would wake up with panic attacks in the middle of the night, worried I was going to lose this house. Cause what would that say about me and my success and my business and all the things, right? Do you see what I'm getting at here? Like th this is, I don't know, this might be a really important video for somebody. Because that branch timeline outside of yourself is like, I got to have the new car or the new house. You can have the new car or the new house. You can literally have anything you want, but you better heal yourself first and it better come from within. Because that's where God is. If you're asking God outside of yourself to give you something outside of yourself, you're going to end up with something outside of yourself. It won't graft to you and your sacred timeline. It will be a tangent universe. And that tangent universe will fall apart on you. It will. Like, like it will, it will, it will. In fact, the rules of this book state it, but that's a fictional book, Cub. Pretty interesting that that fictional book is talking about things I've actually experienced and you've experienced. You know, your last boyfriend or girlfriend, they're the one. Oh, I see in their eyes everything. Oh, everything I ever wanted. Or your last husband or wife or partner or whatever. The job, I got to get the job. When I have the job, everything will be, that job sucked your soul and it's still sucking your soul. You're working 12 days a week. There's not 12 days in a week, Cub. In your week, there are. Because you can't even get a Sunday off without getting emails about crap you got to deal with on Monday. You can't even enjoy your family because that is not a part of your sacred timeline. Fields says, holla. Honeybee broken heart, absolutely. Lynn says, 100% true. Fields says, a corruption of the outer influences can do damage to the one true purpose. Amen. Chrissy says, I got to do it myself. I, I know. Absolutely. Thank you guys for the gifts. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. All things, Lisa. Thank you. Um, let me see. Okay. We got a comment. Virgil Kane. Virgil says, my main interest is in astrophysics. Physics. See, I can't even say it, much less do it. What has always fascinate, fascinated me in the block universe theory is that reality, including the future, exists now. Kind of like density, your unalivement has already happened in your time. Yeah, absolutely. Your car hasn't got you there yet. I make sense of this by thinking of the universe in an experiment of mine as a road with a beginning and end and time as your car with no reverse gear, the faster you go, the less you age because of time dilation and you hit the markers quicker. Anyway, the question is, can we be visited by ghosts from the future? I would just add block universe theory is supported by Einstein theory of special relativity as opposed to presentism. Man, you're over my head, Virgil. Good for you, brother. I love it. I love it. I'm glad that I have smarter people than me in here. That means I'm reaching the right people. Because this is not just the Cub show for me to go, look what's in my mind. This is for me to connect a bunch of consciousnesses together so that we can create something bigger. I love it. I love it. What's up, Molly? How are you? Welcome, my friend. So uh, to kind of tag on that, I don't know much about those theories. I'm actually just now starting to explore this type of thing. Like I said, I've done a lot of religious and spiritual text on here. Um, and so now I'm just kind of getting more into um, like a lot of my peers and friends on TikTok are doing, you know, a lot of the like secret papers and, you know, experiments and stuff that have been done. And I thought I'd start doing that myself, but with a spin, 
Like, let me look at fictional works, completely fictional books and ideologies and theories, see how they might actually work in our lives. Uh, I thought it would be fun. So that's what that's what I'm doing. But I love that. What's up, Benny? How are you doing, brother? Renee, welcome. Sozin, thanks for being here. Martin says, we are endless change. Nothing stays the same flow with the river of change. It liberates. Amen, my brother. Amen. So, yeah, and I love that idea. Like your, um, even there's a movie now or a series called Everything Always All at Once Now or something like that. And, and I love that idea because for me, multiverse theory makes a lot of sense. Uh, because everything is happening or has happened. But is there another observation of that happening is the big, the biggest question. In another reality, I work, you know, at some firm in Hollywood doing special effects for movies. That was a path that I wanted to take at one point. Probably still, you know, would love to take that path, right? But I actually think what I'm doing here is more of my, my sacred timeline than all these other things, right? Um, so the question begs, is there another cub experiencing that or is there another shadow that's already going through that? And as soon as I jump into that, I'm there because I don't, I believe that consciousness is universal, but I also believe it's only observed through player one at the time. And right now this is player one. This cub is player one in this reality, because I asked the source of all things to put me in my life's work, to put me in my divine timeline, literally asked this in 2020, lost everything, including my religion, literally. And here I am now, right? So um, is there another cub that's still in the old house? It's still in the old timeline, still working for the church, still running his business, still whatever. Like, is that cub still in existence? Maybe. That's the theory, right? Do you think that there's an infinite number of you running around as well? But God has only taken up space in this reality, in this divine timeline. And that's why our other timelines collapse, because they're just shadows. They're just playing out. They're non-player characters. What if you are the non-player character until you're player one? I don't know. I think there's something to that, guys. I think there's something to that. So more on this. I'm going to reread chapter one here because this really drives home what we're talking about. The primary universe is fraught with great peril. There is battles, plague, famine, natural disaster. They're all common. Unalivement comes to us all. The fourth dimension of time is a stable construct, though it is not impenetrable. Incidents within the fabric of the fourth dimension becomes corrupted are incredibly rare. So they're rare, okay? According to this fictional work, right? If a tangent universe occurs, it will be highly unstable, sustaining itself for no longer than several weeks. Eventually it will collapse in upon itself, forming a black hole within the primary universe capable of destroying all existence. This is where it gets scary. This is like if we literally followed a path that is not in our fate, that is not in the highest good, could it just collapse the entire universe and literally end an entire universe, an entire timeline? And that theory has been explored by many different science fiction uh, writers and novelists, all the way to actual scientists, right? Of like, what happens if one of the multiverses gets destroyed? Does it prune other ones? Does it destroy the main universe? Is there even a main universe? We perceive there is because we have ego, right? We have dualism. We have good and evil, right and wrong. We think we know, even though we never do what we should, right? We always follow normally our fears, our doubt, our uncertainty. But we still think we know. You still think you know what's best for you, even though you've proven a million times that you have no clue what's best for you. You assume you can tell your best friend what to do and you know what's best for them, even though your life is completely, completely a mess. Oh, I'm blessed, though. God's blessed us. Yeah, well, your life's still a mess. How do I know that? Because my life's still a mess. Because life is messy. Because we're all a bunch of particles bumping into each other, a bunch of different egos, a bunch of I 
and ams, a bunch of existences and a bunch of egos. That's what I am means, by the way. Ego exists in the Greek. Ego exists. Ego exists. So when you say I am, you are taking existence and bringing it into your ego and graphing your ego with existence. That inherently is what God is. That's what we create with. That's how we have this insane reality that we live in because we're all creating God. Well, isn't God the uncreated? Yeah, absolutely. But we're creating our versions of God, him, her, they, it, them, whatever you want to call it. Why do you think there's so many different gods? No, there's only one God. Yeah, well, your one God's a heck of a lot different than the next person's one God. Nobody can argue that. Somebody will try, but. Ready Player One, absolutely, Lance, absolutely. And I've been vibing on that movie too. I'm about to rewatch that movie because again, I think all of this is like ebbs and flows, waves of consciousness pouring out into the collective consciousness. Frank, thank you so much for the roses, brother. God bless you, my friend. Generator, operator, and destroyer, absolutely, Benny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's literally the three. The three. Uh, you know, you've got like, um, yeah. What is it? Uh, Krishna, Shiva. And Vishnu, you know, uh, you have the sustainer, the creator, and the destroyer all in one, right? Um, let's see. Yeah, um, I mean, here's the deal. I think most of the time when people see ghosts, they're seeing alternate realities. I think like when someone leaves behind energy, I don't think people's souls are stuck. I really don't believe that. Um, I think the soul goes on. I think a spirit is left behind a spirit of, you know, I was watching this paranormal show where a guy had unalived himself in the apartment next door and he was beating on the wall and, and wanted to be communicated with to the guy with celebrity ghost stories, actually a great show. Um, he wanted to communicate with, with the guy that had moved into that apartment. The guy couldn't figure out why, why did he graft me instead of the guy upstairs or downstairs or over here? And at the end, he determined, and I can't remember who the celebrity was. He was a writer on one of the night shows, the late shows. Uh, the man show, actually, is what he was a writer on. Um, but he said that he felt like he needed to talk with this guy because, and this is a clue to reality here and ghosts and all the stuff. He needed, excuse me. Uh, got a little, we had the wind blow in today, and I'm got me all choked up he said he needed to talk to that guy so he didn't screw up his life not the guy who had unalived himself but the celebrity was like i needed to have that conversation at 4 a.m when my picture was beating itself he said he was watching his picture beating itself on the wall he could feel a presence he hid under his bed like a kid and finally walked out onto the balcony and the next balcony over was where this guy had unalived himself while he was out of town, he didn't know it had happened. And he came back and the whole apartment complex was all in, in disarray. And, but he said he needed to have that conversation with that spirit, that entity, that energy, that whatever, not for it, but so he could realize how good he had it in his life. Cause he said before that he had moved into this apartment. He was driving all around Hollywood. He had bought a really fancy car. He was smoking cigars all the time being a total jerk to anybody he could because he had made it. And he said it was literally that day. And this didn't happen anymore after that, when he got literally scared out of his mind and like a little kid hid under his bed or under his covers and then went out and talked with the spirit, this energy, this entity that he clearly knew was there trying to communicate with him. And he just sat down and talked to it as a friend talks to a friend said, I'm so sorry. What happened to you? I'm so sorry. Uh, that I wasn't there and nobody was there. I'm so sorry that this world didn't work out for you. And he said he realized at the end of that conversation that it was about him. It was about him. And I don't necessarily believe it was this guy that was visiting him so much as his consciousness created this energy. This energy was left there and he grafted to it and used it to better his life to make sure he didn't screw up his timeline, to make sure that he continued writing for the show, that he didn't self-destruct, that he could continue to bring joy to people and laughter and can continue his life. 
And then in all this crazy up and down, thank you guys for the hearts. I really appreciate you. All this crazy up and down, you got to think of life as like this, this organism that vibrates and moves. We're all a part of one thing. We're all part of this universe, this mind of God. The known universe is the most massive thing you can't even imagine. And everyone's thoughts and energies and actions and voices and electrostatic, everything that we're doing is adding to this collective wave and vibration. And so at what point do our choices actually affect other people and actually affect a timeline that's for the highest good of humanity? Because no, I do not believe that there's a bearded man sitting on a cloud playing chess with everybody. But I do believe the universe is pre-programmed for the highest good. And within that is the theory of chaos. We are meant to wield chaos and control chaos into the highest good. That's why when Jesus talks about planting seeds, the kingdom is like a seed. The kingdom is like a seed. The kingdom is like a seed. The kingdom is within you. The kingdom is within you. The kingdom is within you. It's literally what he said over and over. Yet you got millions of people right now. They're all looking up. When is it coming? When is our savior coming? All different cultures, by the way, looking right now for when is something going to save us? And what we've been told by every ascended master over and over and over and over is that you plant the seeds. You change reality one seed at a time. And if enough people figured this out at once, all of a sudden we would hear a literal difference in the resonant frequency of our planet and possibly the entire universe. Or at least the universe that this particular planet, this particular timeline, this particular version of the multiverse that you're watching right now, Cub is player one, would actually start to harmonize. And as the scriptures say, all creation would sing the song of the glory of God, right? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. We are all connected, Molly says, yes. And I want you to think about that. We are all connected. Why are we all connected? If you're connected, then you're a part of a whole. If you're disconnected, you're not a part of a whole. And in 2020, a lot of people got disconnected from each other physically, but it didn't do anything. We actually went within and we found that we were connecting friends and family members and relatives and spirit guides and higher consciousnesses and help help. The hive, absolutely, Chrissy. And we realize we don't need this in our hand. We don't need to be strapped into this. We don't need to be stuck in this. Because that actual frequency that we that we know is home, that that sacred timeline was there all along. We just had to slow down enough to actually ride that. Lance says it would it would ring throughout creation. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Juan. I appreciate you. Uh, everybody that's contributed to the live goal. Thank you, guys. We're at 264 of, uh, where are we? 1,000 roses. Yeah, it's only 1,000 roses. I said 10,000 earlier. It's only 1,000 roses. Yeah, so we're, 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 over half, we're almost halfway there. Y'all keep dropping them. Thank you guys for the stars on Facebook as well. Super chats, if you're watching on YouTube or super thanks, you can just be like, hey, thanks, Cub. Drop me a $5 super thanks, $10. We literally have people drop $100 super thanks over there. So thank you, guys. That literally directly supports what I'm doing. I appreciate it. I do realize the platforms take a cut, and that's okay, because what it does is it actually helps boost my content. Okay, That actually helps show the algorithms to show this to more people. So I'm okay with them taking a little bit of a cut. That's, that's actually cool with me at this point, because the more gifts I get, the more it shows, hey, push this out to more people. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, so I'm not mad about it. I'm not, I'm not upset about it. Somebody the other day was ranting about it and telling me I shouldn't be asking for that. And I'm like, no, no, no. I play the game, guys. I'm here to entertain. I'm a full-time content creator. I'm obliged to do that. I love doing that. Happy to do it. Grateful and blessed to do it. If you do want to support me outside of the platforms and you want to get to know me more as well as the community, you can join our Mythos community membership. 
It's only nine bucks a month, literally like cheaper than I, I got coffee today. And one of my coffees was actually more of this with tax and a tip. So literally for less than your normal, like your Sunday morning coffee, you can join our community. And our community membership is super easy. One click to join, cancel anytime. It's over at cubcooker.com, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.com. It's our supporter membership, our insider membership, our patron membership, whatever you want to call it. It's just a group of supporters over there that love what I'm talking about, want to make sure I'm still showing up to talk about it, that I can afford to do it and, and put out better content and grow what we're doing. But also we have Zoom meetings every single weekend. Plus, there's a book club now on Wednesday night led by our moderators and our community members. Plus, I drop private content over there, okay? It's nothing bad or crazy. It's just stuff I don't post online. It's actually for the community. I don't have to, like, be all, you know, algorithm-y about it. I can just say what I mean and share my videos. And I normally post at least a video a day over there and share what's going on in my life, more behind-the-scenes stuff more of my inner deeper thoughts about what I'm talking about. So it's just really, it is a great insider membership. And we have a social media style hub that's not on social media. You can actually log into my website, communicate with our other members as well as myself. We've got a ton of different threads you can post in, everything from spirituality, metaphysics, paranormal. We've got a prayer chain in there. We've got all kinds of cool stuff. So if you can't find it in there, I don't know where you'll find it. Uh, but it's a great place to communicate. Please consider joining. Joe, thank you for joining. Appreciate, appreciate you, my friend. Look forward to seeing you and meeting you. Be sure and join one of our Saturday calls. Uh, next weekend, our moderators are going to run the Saturday call, but I'll be back the first weekend in November to run it myself again. And I'm bringing some firepower, guys. I've got, we're actually going to get into money manifesting in November. And I want all of our members to consider showing up for that. Uh, we had a good, really good group, by the way, on Saturday, but I really want to make sure I hit as many ears with this as possible, because as we go into the end of the year, we need to start pruning the lower vibration timelines, the ones that are not for the highest good in our life, the ones that are those tangent timelines we're talking about today, those nexus events in our life, the ones where we're like, I need this, I want this you know, my ego needs it. I want the car. I want the money. You need the car and the money, but you need it for different reasons than you think you do. Because the car needs to get you around so you can spread the message that you have. Because I promise you, you have a message. You need the money for the mission that you have. Because I promise you, you have a mission. And if you haven't found that and you really just like, I just want to, I just want freedom. I just want, I just want to not do anything. You're not in the highest timeline of your life. That attitude is not the highest timeline because you are meant to be a channel of energy. And if you're just channeling energy into, bleh, then you're not doing anything. That's not the highest timeline. That one will collapse in a matter of weeks, months, or like in my case, a couple of years. Even though I was doing some good, I was still, my highest goal was just to chill. How can I be done with everything so I can just chill? And I never really got to chill because I was always worried all the time. And that worry continued to collapse my timeline. And so my highest timeline now is just to always do what I love, always output, always love people, always communicate, always create. And when I'm exhausted, I'll chill then, right? And by reworking my sacred timeline, my I am from within, that has created a brand new reality for me, one that is starting to solidify in ways I never thought possible and starting to work as the background operating system for my life rather than this thing I feel like I have to feed into and force every day. It's starting to be a self-perpetuating, self-feeding cycle that even when I'm sleeping, it is working for me. How many of you guys actually want that? When you're asleep, you're still bettering your finances. You're bettering your life. Your spiritual understanding is raising even in your dreams. And you're stepping into your full potential every single day. Even when you wake up, you're like, oh, baby, I'm in my full potential today. I'm ready. Let's go. You want that, right? If you don't want that, you will. 
I didn't know I wanted that. I finally, like a few weeks ago, went, my life should be a cycle. It should be producing energy, feeding it to me instead of me producing energy to feed to it. Okay. If I'm a battery, I want to be a battery that's constantly being charged. Okay. Not a battery that's constantly going to the red like your phone. Okay. I should be a power bank to charge other people. And when I become a power bank, I can charge a whole lot of other people. Right now we're charging well over a hundred people in our private community. We're on the way to 200, 300. We might even be at 300 by the end of this year in our community. That's just our private community. We're at 750,000 people. Over a million people every month consume this content. Over a million. Some months it's like four, five, six million. One month, it was like seven, almost eight million people had watched one of my videos. Different people, by the way, because I look at all the analytics and all the stuff, right? Because I'm a nerd. Guys. You can't make this stuff up, but you can create a reality where you become a power bank for yourself, your home, your family, and others, rather than a battery that gets depleted every day. Become the power bank because other people will pay into you so that you can pay out to other people. And this power bank wants to pay dividends well beyond what I'm receiving because I'm going to create other power banks and we're going to continue to charge this world with positivity, love, and light and start to understand the nature of reality and become co-authors of our reality for real guys. Okay. I'm not just, this is not just talk. This is something I'm working on. I'm fulfilling in my life. I'm creating in my life. And I'm going to give you guys, a little bit of the secret I shared with our community on private the other day, the ABCs of manifestation. This is from a huge document I'm working on, like a literal top secret Cubs secret method over the last 10 years of trying to destroy himself and recreate himself and come into who he really is and actually create sacred timelines that stick and serve me as a power bank rather than depleting my battery every day. This is what I've come up with. And this is just a very small fraction from the much larger document, much larger process I'm working on, which is literally just a step-by-step -step process. It's something I do every day. But this is how I start my day. This is number one. And if you start to practice this, I want to hear your results. You can comment. Try this tomorrow morning. Do this tonight before you go to bed. Try it tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, and tomorrow evening. Do it at least three times a day. Get it where you know this, where you've memorized this. And you can repeat it and it becomes part of your sacred timeline. It comes from within, not trying to remember it and bring it down. It should come straight from your heart where you can rattle it off anytime and it can become part of your I am. So the ABCs of manifestation, number one, I agree. I am worthy of all good things. Number one, I agree. I am worthy of all good things. Say it with me, class. Number one, I agree. I am worthy of all good things. You should be bringing this up to yourself every morning. You should remind yourself. You should remind the universe. You should remind your neighbors. Your neighbors should be like, that person believes that they are worthy of all good things. And I don't know who my neighbor is, but they're crazy. I guarantee you mine think I am. I'm out there walking around all woo-woo. I agree. I am worthy of all good things. My neighbors are like, Cub is worthy. He's worthy. I don't know who the guy is, but Mr. Tie-Dye over there, he's worthy. Molly, thank you. Molly says, I am worthy of all good things. Number two, I believe, I believe I am one with the supreme being. You guys can rework these however you need to. I believe I'm one with God. How many people believe that? How many people actually can say that? And it doesn't stick in your throat. It doesn't hit here with this weird little fear of, did I just, am I going to get zapped by lightning? Did I just say a blasphemy? Did I just, what if my mom hears? She thinks she's one with God. She's lost it. She's got a demon. How many people have heard that? I have, by the way. I believe I am one with God. God. 
I believe I am one with the Supreme Being. Thank you, Frank. I believe I am one with God. Molly says, I believe I am one with the Almighty Father and the Divine Mother. Amen, my friend. And what does that make you, Molly? What does that make you? It makes you a bona fide, certified, justified, chicken fried, son, daughter, child, heir of God, right? Absolutely. A daughter of God. Thank you, Molly. Thank you. And that's what I'm talking about, guys. And number three here, I command I am author of my reality. I command I am author, not an author. I am author of my reality. When you master these three things, you will master not only your own life, but the lives of others. People will look at you and think that they'll think one of two things. That person is insane and they freak me out and I don't want anything to do with them. And on the flip side of that, and I've gotten this too, they just downright loathe you. I don't know why, but that cub just rubs me the wrong way. Or they will literally be magnetized to you and want to know what you have. They're not going to ask you. They might ask you, what religion are you? What do you believe? People ask me that all the time. What does it matter? It matters what you believe. Because I'm saying my I am's every morning. I'm going through it. I'm working through it. And it's coming from my core because I'm operating out of the inner system that I'm creating the outer. Okay. As above, so below, as within, out, uh, so without, okay? I agree I am worthy of all good things. I believe I am one with the supreme being. I command I am author of my reality. Say it once, say it twice, say it a thousand times until you don't choke on it. You don't have a little mm in your heart about it. You don't have a little ooh in your gut about it. You don't even care what your neighbors think. Say it to the point where you're so delusionally in agreement with this that you watch magic work around you. And I can tell you that because I am not even at the point where I delusionally believe this. Now, I probably do by most people's standards. Most people think like, God, man, Cub is, he is delusional. He thinks he's worthy. Do you know who he used to be? Do you know what people think of him? It doesn't matter what they think of me. It matters what I think of me. And when I finally realized that, and that's the secret to life, Everything changed. All of a sudden now, friends that I haven't heard from in years are wanting to hang out with me and calling me and giving me opportunities. All of a sudden, people that I never thought would listen to my content are like DMing me like, hey, I don't comment publicly because, you know, obviously, I don't want to be seen as crazy. But I really like what you're doing. You've really helped me think about things. I even have had creators that I never thought in a million years would want to collaborate with me, reach out to me. That's a timeline shift. That's a permanent timeline shift. How do you know if you're permanently timeline shifted or if you're still have branches that need to be pruned and grafted into your, your primary timeline? If you have days off from your mission, from your destiny, from whatever you're doing, like me, I've quit my my everything. You know, I don't do all the contracting like I used to do. This is my full-time gig. But when I have a day off, my resting state on that day off tells me if I'm fully solidified in a timeline yet. And I'm not a hundred percent there. I'm much more there than I was a year and a half ago, but still on my days off, I'll find myself, you know, my mind wandering or I'll find myself not remembering my I am's or not really believing them because I'm not outputting. So when you're in a resting state, when the water of your heart is placid and glassy, you should be able to see the reflection of the reality that you're creating. Now, I see that reflection easily when I'm outputting. In fact, when I'm outputting and, and I'm doing the podcast and I'm doing videos and commenting and we got all this energy going 
I see that reflection. I see the waves welling up. I see the rainbows and the storm and all the cool stuff. And it's like, oh, creating all this energy. <sighs> out to everybody. But then when all that calms and I'm not outputting and I'm just resting and I find myself and I'm not a thousand percent delusionally convinced of everything I said on the last podcast or everything I said on the video or even what I'm reading in my Bible or what I'm reading in the Bhagavad Gita or what I'm reading in the Dhammapada or what I'm reading or the movie I'm watching or whatever. When I find myself distracted from my true I am, the one that I know is in there. But when I go into a resting state and I'm still kind of in this place of like, I've got that weird little uneasy queasy feeling. Anybody know what that uneasy queasy is? Raise your hand if you have an uneasy queasy occasionally. Like you just, if you just sit down in a chair and rest and you don't have any thoughts, and you have that uneasy queasy to pick up your phone, turn the TV on. You're just with your own thoughts. Frank says me, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the honesty, Frank, because I do too. You got the uneasy queasy. You haven't grafted fully to your sacred timeline. Peace should come upon you about everything you do say and feel and feel and feel. Elsa's disconnected, yes. So when you disconnect from your active manifestation, that's a great way to put it. When you disconnect from your active manifestation, the the stillness of your life and that peace should still reflect everything that you've been manifesting. You should actually have so much peace in it and know that it's true and it's done and it's it's actually perpetuating while you're at rest, while you're asleep, while you're in the shower, while you're on vacation. What you've manifest is paying for itself in time, energy, money, and attention. Who you are is so solidified that there is no question what you would do in any situation. And how people perceive you doesn't matter anymore because you're truly confident in your sacred timeline. Thank you guys for 10,000 likes on TikTok, by the way. I really appreciate that. Mr. Mortal, what's up, my friend? How are you doing? Cub, your words are so loving and beautiful and poetic. They help me realize that it doesn't matter what other people think of you. Amen, my friend. It only matters what you think of yourself and your own journey with some tears. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. This is taking me forever to figure out. That's why I'm trying to pour it out as, as accurately as possible here. Because some of you guys just need to sit with yourself and go, this is not peace. And I need to reprogram the main timeline of my life and the highest good so that I can set at a resonant frequency of my authentic self and get rid of anything that does not allow me to be my authentic self. By the way, that's easier said than done. You will not do that overnight. You'll make that decision overnight and you'll say that prayer. God, please, I just want to be authentic. I just want to be real. I'm tired of faking it. And I've, I've had that prayer before had that in 2020. That's why I'm here now. Because I agreed to prune all of those timelines that were divergent timelines, that were nexus timelines, that were what Donnie Darko calls the tangent universe. The one that had gone off on a tangent because Cub wanted to be successful to fill something in Cub that hadn't been filled by mommy, daddy, girlfriend, wife, all the things I gotta build, I gotta be successful. I want people to look at me and go, dang, Cub is successful. Mr. College Dropout, super successful now, right? What's up, Shelly? How are you, my friend? So I was working from the outside in rather than the inside out. And that's literally the secret right there. And in fact, it's actually so hard to do that you will fail over and over and over and over. But when you finally get it, you're gonna feel it and go, how the heck can I recreate this? I got to figure it. I got to write down a framework. I'm going to, here's my framework. And then you'll write it down and you'll try that framework and you'll repeat it and you're still not feeling it. And you're like, what is the secret to this? But that's the fun of it, guys. And I'm writing down my frameworks to try to help you. If you want more of those and you want just more access to what I'm intimately doing in my life and the things I'm teaching the community, join our mythos group. Literally only nine bucks, guys. 
And, I, and I'm here to tell you, and I'm going to start talking about money in November, because if $9 is standing between you and the community or me or going all in on yourself, $9 is not your problem. You have a much bigger problem. Okay. Because you're spending $9 on things, I, I promise you. Now, if you're in a situation, you got like a fixed income, you're disabled, anything like that, you come to me and I will make sure that you get access to what we're doing. Okay. But don't, don't jip me on that. Don't lie to me. Don't inflate your situation so that you feel like you're getting special treatment because I've had that happen before and those people leave the community. So don't do that. Come to me in authenticity and honesty about your situation. I will make sure you get in our group and that nobody is left behind. But I promise you guys are just because I, I lie to myself. You know what I do every time I think this or every time I have someone they, they cancel. By the way, we have very few people cancel. In fact, our, our growth rate is much higher than our cancellation rate, which I love. But every time somebody cancels and they're like, hey, money situation right now, I'll try to come back later. Hey, cool. No issues, my friend. No worry at all. I go out and sign up for another $9 membership myself. Am I just minding myself or what am I doing here? I am telling myself $9 is not the issue. That person did not understand what I'm teaching. They did not understand how to leverage this community, the teachings I do in there, the calls on Saturday, the book club and everything to take their life from here to here and start becoming all they could be. Because that's the point of this, okay? This isn't just to hold hands and sing kumbaya. We are watching people. I'm watching Honey Bee. We've got um, who we have, Honey Lee. we got Frank. We've got uh, Martin. We've got uh, Ashley. All of them are out here creating every day. There's no deficit in their life. Yeah, we've had some members who've gone through some horrible things in their life. And the communities come together to support, to lift up, to help push them forward. And now they are back on their feet. They're working hard. They're doing life. They're manifesting and they're helping people. And by outputting and helping other people, you're not worried about $9 a month. Okay. I'm not saying that as a sales pitch. I'm saying that because it's been on my heart. And I really do. I go out every time somebody tells me, oh, I'd love to join, but finances... And then I go look at their Facebook page, not that I, you know, not that I'm creep or anything, but if they have a public page, I'm always curious, what are they? Oh, well, went to dinner, went to dinner, went out for drinks, new clothes here. Really? $9 ain't your problem. Shopping is your problem. Okay. There's something blocking you from what you really want and need. And that's what I'm trying to help people get to. Okay. And I'm stepping into my power to do that now, finally. I'm here to entertain and enlighten and have some fun, but I really want your life to get better. I really want your life to change. I really want you to step into your power, step into your destiny, start writing your destiny, stop creating branch timelines just to prove to yourself that none of this works. Stop creating blocks in your mind. Well, $9, I don't know. Really, you got eight streaming networks and, and one little membership with a whole bunch of awesome people and access to more of this mind melting ideology here. That's the big issue. That ain't the issue. Who's the issue? Go look in a mirror. Okay. That's what I have to do every day. I have to look in a mirror. I'm not trying to call anybody out here. I just want to get real with you guys. Okay. This is not about $9. Like I said, if you're on, like you've got a fixed income, you're disabled, you got stuff like that. Guys, I've put people in on scholarship before, and I'll do it again. I'll do it a million times if I need to, to make sure that nobody is separated from what we're doing. But I've actually done that with some people and watched them. They've grown. They've gone out. They've bettered their lives. And then they're like, hey, I want to start paying. Hey, I'm going to start tipping. Hey, I, I want to join. I actually want to give you a donation and catch up. Because that is the mind-transforming philosophy. That is the supernatural that I am trying to bring to the world. It is supernatural. It's not natural. Your natural state is $9 is a problem. Your natural state is your husband or wife. They're the problem. Your natural state is the church hurt you. Your natural state is 
There's not enough. Your natural state is you sit in a chair in the quiet, in the dark of your home, and you feel alone and trapped. That natural state is something that I promise you you can fix because I've fixed it in me. I promise you you can gain authority over it, and you can start to actually take it from that little feeling in your gut, that little uneasy queasy, to this exciting what, what do I get to do tomorrow feeling? That's what I want to help everybody with, guys. I'm here to help transmute energy. I am a spiritual practitioner, a supernatural practitioner. I go beyond spiritual, okay? I'm not just over here to kumbaya and do all this stuff. I want you to contact the supernatural in your life, find your supernatural gifts, find your spiritual understanding, and move yourself into your sacred timeline. Like, I literally want to do that. That's my heart for this community. I didn't just start this so I could look at myself on TikTok. I started this because I really wanted to help some people get out of the deficit that they're in mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Because I've watched many, many institutions not help with that. I watched many different groups not help with that. And I'm doing everything I can to try to help. And you can ask any of our members. I believe we do that quite effectively, actually. In fact, our community is one of the most, I think, one of the safest open spaces, no matter what walk of life you are, race, religion, creed, orientation. I don't care who you are, where you do or don't go to church, who you're married to, as long as you're here in love and light to authentically explore your supernatural self, you are in. You're meant to be a part of our community. Whether you just watch on the podcast or the live stream, or you actually join into what we're doing. And support what I'm doing. That's totally up to you. But the point of this, from the free, by the way, I do free content all the time. From the free content to the paid content and everything in between, our academy is about to open again. And that academy will completely rewire your mind. It'll completely rewire your heart, your mind, your reality. If you let it, if you do the work in it. It'll take you to the next level. Whatever that level is for you, I can't define it, but the course will help you define it. In fact, there's multiple courses in it. It's not open right now, but if you want to know about it, join the Mythos community and you'll be the first to know and get info about when I open up enrollment again. Because I'm doing it different now to make sure people get the best results. I'm interested in results. That is... I've gotten results, guys. I've lost almost 70 pounds, not from some weird diet and exercise regimen or some green goo that I drink every day. I've gotten it because I've literally, I believe, and I've watched it happen, raised my consciousness, raised my awareness and, and reprogrammed my mind, my emotions, my gut, my body, everything to work together. Now, I'm not in my ideal, perfect, physical, you know, look at me, but I'm getting there. Okay. I feel better. I look better. I posted a before and after photo not too long ago on my Facebook. You can go look at that. It's amazing, guys. It's amazing. Please, please go all in on you. I don't care if you pay me a dime. Take what I'm saying and go all in on you. Whatever that is, you know, you don't have to buy anything to go all in on you. But you do have to make the decisions. And, and what I talked about today with the IMs, you need to believe those. The reason I created the community is so that everybody could believe them easier. And they got other people that are believing them too that help feed into that energy. Doing it alone is very, 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 very hard. I know I've been doing it alone for a very long time. And now that I have the community too, it makes everything so much easier. It's this like multiplier that we put on everything. <laughs> Molly says, but the green goo is good for you. Hey, man, absolutely. Molly says, our community is the most open and loving group I've ever experienced. Thank you so much, my friend. Oh, awesome. Mr. Mortal Raw is Terra Edits. I changed my name yesterday, so I'm still the Terra Edits that you know. Okay, awesome, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for joining. I appreciate that. I don't always know who people are. Like I said, I can barely see profile pictures unless your face is really big on it. So, Bo, what's up, Memphis? How are you doing, my friend? I hope you're doing well. Shelly, again, thank you for joining, my friend. 
Um, let's see. L had another comment somewhere. I think I missed it. Uh, Mr. Mortal, yeah, says uh, I missed uh, an hour of this. Yeah. Uh, go back and watch it. This is good. This is a good one. So, in fact, this is probably a good sleeper episode. Sunday, October 22nd. 22 is my favorite number. Thought this would be a good one. Um, and I think it is. This was like a deep, deep thought that I had about this movie, Donnie Darko. Thank you. Thank you on TikTok for the microphone. I love it. Love it. Appreciate you guys. Martin, bless you, brother. I love you, man. Thank you so much. Frank, uh, Frank, we will talk. Uh, Frank says people struggle to sacrifice their own comforts. Leave your state of victim mentality and choose. Exactly, my friend. Exactly. Um, our community is my second family. Love you all. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Elle says message me when you can. Awesome, Elle. Uh, Elle, you'll have to message me directly because of the way my account is. It's a creator profile. So you, if you message me, it'll go into message requests and I'll go find it and then get back to you. So just shoot me a message on Messenger. So anyway, love you guys. I hope you're having a beautiful day. Uh, like I said, if anybody wants more info on our Mythos community, just shoot me a message. I'm happy to help you in any way I can. Um, but let's go, guys. Let's go. Let's join together. Let's create some energy. Let's help each other better our lives. It's our time. It's our time, finally. Like, let's step into it. Okay, we've been through a lot. Let's step into it. Find that community you're looking for. I know I have. I'm very, very grateful for it. Um and go back and listen to all of this episode. If you didn't, this is so powerful, guys. Listen to the fictional text from Donnie Darko from The Philosophy of Time Travel by Roberta Sparrow. It's a fictional book within this movie. It's absolutely fantastic. Don't miss it. Go check it out. I love you guys. Y'all have a beautiful day. I'm going to do more in this series if you guys like this. Also doing a bunch of short videos going over this if you want to send them to friends or family. It'll be all over. Everything's at my website, cubcooker, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.com. You can't miss it over there. All my socials are there, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. Um, where else are we? Threads now um, on Apple and Spotify. Somebody complimented me the other day, and they're like, your output on Apple and Spotify are godlike, like literally unheard of. Nobody puts out those many that many podcasts. Guys, we do. I'm putting out, you know, five or six podcasts a week right now, all about, you know, 60 to 90 minutes. So I'm really trying to be thorough on everything and make sure that we have great episodes that really hit on on what I'm actually going through and what I'm actually believing on or what I actually want to help people with. Uh, it's all around supernatural, all around the supernatural realms and stuffs and all the cool uh, phenomenon, and ultimately creating your supernatural reality. That's the number one thing I want to help people with. So thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Thank you for the support. Thank you, guys, for helping me meet my goals today. God bless you. Namaste and peace.